the LKC boys running out onto the field now. Looking good. Uh, their size, it's, it's very good. <laughs> and our two tight judges there. Shindy and Matthews. And now the boys from Tare running onto the field, the Hercules Leopards. It's a great place at number 13. Tawanda are blunt. Some good skills from the young men throughout the week. Good side steps, get after contact, using his feet very good. Let's see what he has got in store for us. Uh, and the kick is not looking a bit predictable. Let's see where he takes it. He takes it to the right side of the field, nice and high. There. A turn over there. A knock on the ref says, and they're taking us to the first come of the day to your crest. Looks like the big one has just had a knock there. I'm sure we'll be fine. Uh, the first contact uh, is usually very harsh and very hard, and uh, these two teams don't know each other very well. Now it's uh, scrummed on LKC ball. I hope that this time we'll get the boys playing basics and kicking out of danger and not putting themselves under too much pressure. So now it is scrum down. Uh, so far, no pushing and no turning of scrums. It is good so far that uh, spoke too early. That scrum is turning. And it's a penalty in favor of uh, boys from Manikaland. And they're getting the head strong. Ball is out. <laughs> it seems like that was a knock, but it's some terrible hands. Rift is having a look at that. And it's a knock on. Knocking on when you're about to break a line. This is going to be a very interesting match. Still nil-nil. The score are still leveled. Just about two minutes into the first half. And it looks like LKC are just watching and waiting for these guys to break down. And this taking us to the <laughs> second scrum of the day. <laughs> is having a chat with them. A good push from the LKC boys from Zambia. Looking up to setting up some phases. The forwards are nice and tight there. They're looking to gain some ground. Picked it up. Found out some few meters. Looking like they're setting up for some pick and goals. Uh, and just just after their 22, would it be a good decision, Jeffrey? I think for now it will be. It will allow them to re strategize. So that uh, territory will give them some bit of a buffer. So now they're starting it all over again now. It's the homeboys with a dummy and he keeps going a handoff offload not so good partly intercepted knocked backwards and it's a try opening try some good skills from the young man the tawanda are blunt uh stepping with some good footwork taking the score five now in favor of the Hercules leopards
let's see if Mangena can get this one right. And you missed. And the score is still five now in favor of the Eucharist Leopards. It's quite sad that um, a boy with such uh, good kicking skills missed that one. I guess he should have uh, aimed for the far left post as a left footer so that the ball would curl inwards. But it's a good healthy lead, 5-0. Uh, Hillcrest will look to capitalize on that one. Just looking at the crowd, it seems like uh, numbers are picking up, especially for the build-up for the final game. I know we call it a final because it's the last game of the tournament, but the tournament is not about an ultimate winner. It is about participation. Hillcrest on the rise again, and they're aiming to go wide. I believe they've got some serious gas and some speed at the far end. And it is shown because uh, that those backs seem to be gaining some good ground. Better technique this time from these two teams. The ball being secured very well. OKC on the up, making sure that they're trying to use the line as their 16th man. And a penalty to Hillcrest. <laughs> a bit sloppy. I don't know why the trend now at uh, the River Rugby Festival for the boys to take a quick tap. Maybe it's because it's all about the offload breaking a line. But quite often, as we've just seen right now, the ball is turned over either by virtue of a knock or the boy is getting too late to the fringe. To get down to that uh, fringe, a lot of kicking and trying to clear. And it uh, seems like these, these uh, fringe and rucks are getting smaller as the boys are trying to play some open play. Two, three men in. First one to go down, second to secure, third to clear. And then the fourth setting up the other phase. And uh, the Zambians are doing very well. This is, uh, should be their fifth phase. They get into a sixth, uncontested, going for the seventh phase, switching sides. And the same thing, one man goes down, one secures, the other clears, and then the fourth distributes, or the fifth. And they're gaining some ground, some painful ground doing that. Maintaining the same technique, first, second, third, fourth, clear, go over, they secure the ball. And there's that other pod as they get in for their ninth phase. We haven't seen a lot of this in schoolboy rugby. But the Zambians seem to be schooling Hillcrest. And you can see the scrum off talking about the next competition. But not a problem because they're able to secure that lateral passing. So that makes sure that they maintain that gain line. This time they gain four or five yards. And there's that pod once more. And as you can see, they're drawing numbers. And Hillcrest are losing out on numbers on the far side. And also LKC, very clever to notice that uh, Hillcrest are very quick on the outside. And these boys are getting into double figures in terms of uh, their phases. And I can see some smiles on a lot of coaches' faces. The eighth man going through, breaking the line. But unfortunately, possession being turned over and the despair on the coach's face. But he's quite pleased because uh, the boys have shown some quality and class of rugby there. Two, two, two. We're going to set it, set it up again. By the RKC boys. In the colors black and white, and the Eucharist in their traditional colors blue and white. Setting up the third phase now. Let's see what their line can do. Oh, unfortunately, they lost it into contact there. Looking to counter rack. And the penalty has been blown against the LKC boys. A quick tip. Taking it up is the big man there. The number three. Unfortunately, he couldn't catch that one. Playing advantage of the LKC boys. Could run from the young man there. Looking for a turnover. Are the LKC boys? 
You got it. Setting up some phases. Down the line, they pass it. Lost it into contact. It seems to be a big problem on, on this tournament. But uh, some of the other things that have been going right is the fact that uh, the visiting boys have got some very good body positioning. In fact, the, both teams have shown some good body positioning. Now you find that boys are getting into contact uh, and they're knocking over their opponent using their shoulders. And uh, it keeps the rugby game very safe and clean. And uh, the boys from Zambia doing a very good job there. And uh, it's a scrum down. Hopefully this one doesn't turn because initially they started off the match with uh, scrums that were being turned over because they were turning. Just a bit of information, a lot of the players that are uh, playing in the Derby Rugby Festival have come from the Tag Rugby Trust. As you know, Tag Rugby is uh, the entry level of uh, non-contact rugby, which orientates players into mainstream rugby. A quick... Uh, back inside and uh, the center from uh, the LKC is doing very well breaking some good lines and um, that is uh, Cheko not so sure what his name means but uh, Lite Gilo Cheko is the center that uh, got in there to break the lines and um, very good first center nice handoff much to the crowd's uh, pleasement and um, that lateral passing and uh, the boys are uh, getting through another turnover it's the LKC ball now, and uh, they're coming strong. And look at how Hillcrest have changed their fortunes. And they know that these guys are going to come phase after phase, and they've changed the defensive format, not allowing them to gain ground. That looks like a forward pass, but uh, Riff will let it go, it seems. The LKC balls with their phases on the third phase now. A good switch back to the number 14 there. Setting it up for another phase. Good skills from the LKC boys. Taking it Taking it up with some good pace is the big man from Zambia. Nice and tight is the number seven. Gaining some ground there. Looking like they're going for pick and goes. Like a 10 over there. The Lucas boys winning that one. Looking for a quick ball down the line with some good pace. Some good surface rugby from the Lucas boys. Looking for the offload. We couldn't get that one. Position being turned over to the LKC boys. Some good speed from the number 12 there. Lost it into contact. He was looking for the offload. Some good from the from the weakest foot back now Ezra looking to it looks like it has been turned over by the LKC boys 
Jeff Lash Point. For a penalty against the Elkhurst Point. So a big correction there. The LKC coming through from uh, Botswana. Should have picked that up uh, with those names. Uh, as you know from uh, Setswana, you'll find that uh, names such as uh, Letsabo, that should have been the bi biggest giveaway. Um, but still, the boys from uh, Botswana playing very well, and it seems like they're enjoying the weather because they're used to playing in uh, much hotter conditions uh, than this. So the cooler temperatures uh, seem to be doing them a lot of good boys coming through together it is a line out in favor of the home side and uh, you find that uh, defensive formations have changed a couple of years ago everyone that's not in that line out will be on a flat line so it's a pretty predictable two ball and then it's a quick ball out watch that back inside waiting for that offload inside they decide to go flat and i love the way these players are playing like uh, sevens players making sure that balls are distributed and each head on hit looks more like a truck and trailer than anything else Body position from the LKC side from Putsana. Learning to set up for some phases now. As it looks like it is their game pattern or game plan on me. Taking it up is the center. And already, as you can see on the screen, the pods have been set up nicely. The Rashless one in Lucy. A penalty against the Aircrest for being offside and the boys from Botswana looking to take three points. Let's see if we can get this one out. Unfortunately, we miss that one. That take us, uh, takes us to the 22 for a 22 drop. Quickly taken by the Eucharist boys. They loved it, unfortunately. Setting up their phases again, the LKC boys. Hitting nice and low. Good body positioning. Looking for a pick and go. And he finds some space. Nobody is supporting him, he's isolated. Looks like a turnover. And the referee cross for his crown. expect that uh, with the kind of pace that uh, some of these boys have after breaking one like that they would have been able to convert that but uh, such is the game some of these things do happen just looking into that crowd looking with uh, much anticipation at this stage um, I wouldn't say that LKC has got enough uh, supporters out there but uh, for those people with uh, Tswana and uh, Botswana heritage, they'll be enjoying this. This is the 2018 uh, edition of the Dairy Board Rugby Festival, and at the moment uh, it is 5 0 in favor of the home side, Hillcrest, who had a very long tunnel and have uh, all of the support. So much is going on, uh, different age groups. Three age groups, under 16, under 17, and under 18. So
so you can imagine the hundreds and hundreds of people coming through just to support the boys, especially fa uh, family members. And a lot of the schools themselves, self-sustaining. So here's that um, penalty once again, holding the man up. And then there is going down. Ref not too happy about that. You can see on the RPC bench, not running at all. Look like a two ball. Didn't take it nicely. Good play from the Botswana side, LKC. Taking it into contact nicely. Looking to set up their phases again. As you can see, going up for phases of RTC boys in black and white. Turn over there. But are playing advantage of the RKC boys. A good start from the number 15 there. He's running. A good line break. Retaining the ball quickly. Good run from the big man, the number four. Good step. Nice footwork from the number two there. Good pass plays from the LKC boys. Turnover. Let's see. Taking it up with some good pace with the number 13 Toronto lines with dummies. He looks for the offload. Good support lines. Uh, but he misses it. Now that shows the difference between the two sides because uh, throughout this entire match, you find that LKC. Once they have possession, they hold on to it. They can have 10 to 12 plays consistently unbroken, as opposed to Hillcrest, which has a lot more flair. And uh, like I said uh, earlier on, it's the, the weakness of trying to be very impressive. And there's a massive break out there. And it is try time. It looks like it's try time for Hillcrest. And uh, it's none other than uh, Leon Kadzere coming through with some blistering pace. But this time, I think, despite leading and uh, taking on the lead, and it's 10 0 in favor of Hillcrest, to shy away from that uh, instinct of theirs to have uh, a couple of dummies and to raise the crowd from these dummies. What they should be doing is keeping that position, having more plays, because they have the pace on the far side. Look at that. Untouched, unscathed, nothing at all. So. It is 10, it's actually 12 nil in favor of Hillcrest. But LKC at this rate could probably uh, come back. Unfortunately for them, they don't know the DNA and the culture of the Derry Bod Rugby Festival. This is the place where Flair outclasses anyone else. For many years, we've seen even Tendaim Torre, the beast. Uh, uh, we've seen um, Kawaza himself coming through and a couple of players who've played for the Sables, for um, the Lady Cheaters, they have played at this very venue, at this uh, place 
at uh, Prince Edward School. And it seems like the more flair you have at this festival, the more oomph you've got during the season. Kickoff is good, it's nice and uh, moderate within the deep. And then there goes those boys. You see how loosely that ball is let go, go off. Now he goes off. The offload is right there, but he holds onto the ball a bit too late. And it will be a turnover in terms of possession to LKC. It's a line out to LKC. <coughs> having a chat one or two to the boys on their binds stops it looking for that long bind from bot props of these kicks they seems to find touch and let's see if they hope the person that Monica Lind can make something out of this the two ball the penalty has been caught against LKC. Quick tap. He takes on the gap, the big man. No one is there. He's isolated. On the line. Unfortunately, it's had to take it up and it's a try. <laughs> nice try from the big man there, Rodney Chimidzi. Now the score is 17 no? in favor of Hillcrest. Um, I think what was very confusing for LKC was the fact that Hillcrest was playing their game and they were taking some hits, securing. And then when we went to the far side and uh, the backs were running the ball, I th I'm sure they were all just uh, pacing and watching out for the potential dummy, which uh, eventually did come out. I don't know if the, the boys would have been happy with themselves if they didn't convert, especially from that, uh, from that range. Now let's see if the kick is going to come through. The ball positioning seems to be very good. Uh, kicking tee uh, looks pretty standard. And uh, kick straight from the bottom. The kick not very good. And the score is 17-0 in favor of the Air Crystal Leopards, the boys from Manikland playing LKC from Botswana. Both team showing good skills. Passing it down the line. Good step from the young man, a plant. Good take. On the, on the top there. 
Nice backing pass. What you want then? Setting it up for what another point. Down the line, he passes it. The big man. With some good passing skills. Some good stepping from the young man there, the Matoiti. So first love between the Manikalan boys and that takes us to a trial. Now Hillcrest have found their rhythm. Try time Hillcrest. And uh, they have realized that uh, this 22-0 lead could grow bigger because uh, LKC have been found wanting in terms of their defense. Their tackling is not that great. They are not hitting the boys hard enough. Look at that, brushing tackles, no effort, absolutely no effort. And in the very end, another try. So it seems like a lot more tries are going to be coming through. And that, that conversion is clean. So it's 24 nil, And the ref uh, seems to be calling for half time. 24 nil in favor of Hillcrest. Lots of things to talk about. Right now, I'd be telling the boys like to spread the ball wide because they're really using the effort a bit, and which which makes them a bit exhausted. So they should spread the ball wide, take it up, set up two, three phases down the line, and they will surely make something out of it. I'm pretty sure this is what uh, the coaches say to them, but um, what I actually think I would tell the boys is boys. Go out there, remember your school boys, go and express yourselves. If you feel like this is the time to dummy, this is the time for you to dummy. Because this is exactly what Hillcrest are doing. They are expressing themselves. And um, yes, it is happening for them at the moment. Uh, and the rugby third. As you can see, the first try coming from the number 11 there. The Hillcrest number 11. Washington is in Doga. And some good step from the Manikalan boys. But uh, this is something that we've seen a lot. Um, one of the, the one of those blistering tries from Hillcrest and uh, that express pace coming through but one of the things that we can't ignore from LKC is that LKC showed us um, something spectacular indeed 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 LKC is, is um, doing a spectacular job especially their forwards uh, they are crafting the coach would say uh, really hard to, to to get that advantage line a few meters uh, they're playing uh, forward play but I think coming into second half they should switch it up a bit and play and express uh, express themselves as uh, Jeffrey said earlier on as you can see the coach is I couldn't say shouting, chattering to them what they should do and raising up his finger. Would like to say thank you to Emma. As you can see on the screen there. If you're just joining us now, we are coming live from the Daily Boat School Rugby Festival, uh, where where we are looking for the who's the next beast. Uh, we are currently watching it's half time between Hillcrest Leopards and the LKC, a team from Botswana, and the Hillcrest boys are leading 24-0. And as you can see on the screen, that's uh, the Lady Sebo's coach, the under-18s, the young yeah, the ladies, uh, coach, coach Sykes, and this lovely lady beside him on the right screen. 
as well wait for the referee to take it out to the second half. It blows it off. Playing from left to right are the RKC boys in black and white. And right to left are the Oakris boys in their traditional colors, blue, gray, and white. A good step from the young man there, Ezra. We have seen a cut a lot from him and a pass it on. Not the good of a pass from, from him, but as you can see now, the RKC boys are retaining the ball, putting up, looking up to put some, up some phases, as they have been doing earlier on. The referee has stopped play. For that first infringement that happened, knocking from the Eucharist boys. As you can see, let's see. A short arm for an early push from the Eucharist boys. Let's see what the LKC line can do for us. He takes it up alone, isolated. Which would not be a good idea with this Eucharist defense. As you can see, looking up to setting up some phases as they are going. Taking it up. Setting up some phases as they are on their fifth phase now. Taking it to their sixth is the big man number four. To the seventh. Gaining a bit of a few meters going forward. Yeah, traditional win. Their first man hitting, the second man blitzing, and the third man stealing, and the fourth man picking up the ball and driving through. Looking to holding them up at the Elkis boys. Just on the 22 line are the LKC boys driving forward from left to right, looking to find a try there, but the, a penalty has been considered for a high tackle against you, Christ. Looking to, looking to find, looking to find touch, and he got it, nice and deep, just inside the 22, are the RKC boys. In this game, um, one thing that you can get to enjoy about uh, Derry Boy Rugby Festival is that the boys, it's all about the ego, it's all about the pride. Thus, you haven't seen a lot of kicking. The boys want to gain more mileage, so there's a lot of running ball coming through. And uh, it is a line-out, LKC. I don't think that was intentional, but uh, the jump didn't go very well. Looking for a back inside, and that move needs to be changed and altered. And uh, they're moving a lot quicker. Still very predictable going for phase after phase after phase. Um, it seemed like the boys are really influenced by super rugby play because you can tell where they're supposed to gain extra years. They're not. A pick and go there would have made life much easier for them. But uh, they take it uh, nice and easy and slow. Sort of like a lack of flair in terms of uh, schoolboy rugby. And like I said, it's all about the swag when you're playing at the Dairy Board Rugby Festival. And uh, LKC is lacking in terms of swag, something that Hillcrest is oozing off. And uh, the moment that ball comes through, it's going to be a quick turnover. And now the, the momentum and the pendulum swings the other way around. There goes that play. First, a nice pass. Uh, not exactly clean. And um, it's a penalty. Some of the lovely faces that are making the Dairy Board Rugby Festival 
that's part of that, that, that culture and fashion fair that makes it uh, very iconic. Like I said, that element has since gone down and it's been more rugby and less of that. So back to the field and it, uh, LKC has got the ball one more time and uh, they're in a good scoring position. The boys just need to know that they can go all the way, a couple of extra yards. This is schoolboy rugby, you will not die. Go for that try line. And we've got a different angle now. You can see how close that is. Oh, that was supposed to be a goose step or a side step, but it looked more like a full stop in the end. At least they retain possession. Boy is going down. And uh, Hillcrest watching that. The body language will tell you that the boys have probably stretched themselves a little bit too much in the first half. And uh, they are coming in there. Still more phases. Very much afraid to lose the ball and run it down the line. And Hillcrest uh, cleverly trying to use that 16th man, the touch line. Finally, try time for LKC. And uh, they do it their way, the hard way, which is a hundred phases to get to a uh, to, to get to the try line. Uh, it works in professional rugby, but in school rugby, it's a lot of work for people that are not professionals. Indeed, indeed. Let's see if their number 10 can get this one right. Unfortunately, he misses the one, taking the score 24-5. Predictable way he's kicking the ball right now. On the right side. He lost it. Looking out to set the other phases. And the RKC boys again. Good run from the big man there. Third phase now at the FPC. Penalty for Mark Shodden. A good pick and go from the big man there. What a bump from the big man, the number seven for Hill Christie. What a massive bump indeed, and um, like we said. Uh, the unfortunate thing is when you get these good plays they don't finish them off by going down on the ground and holding the ball but uh, what I liked about that was the perfect body positioning it wasn't so much about his strength or his superior size it was a lot to do look at that body positioning hit him straight with the shoulder with your body intact center of mass just behind your head and you've got that momentum going forward even if you had reversed the sizes of the people and he was the smaller man, he would have still knocked him over. But the same thing. <laughs> yeah, my hands, my hands. The guys are not uh, using their hands very well. It's also uh, an issue of exposure. Some of these boys get into camp. Some of these boys play rugby more than others. And it's a big contentious issue in Zimbabwe. How much rugby should our school boys be playing? Because by now, uh, in South Africa, and uh, which is sort of like the gold standard of what we should be doing in terms of school rugby. Boys turn professional around about this stage. They'll be playing club rugby. All of these boys are not playing in club rugby, save for some of the boys in Hillcrest um, who might be training with um, Mutare Sports Club. But uh, what you'd want these boys to be doing now is playing more rugby. By now, this should be their second festival. Uh, you find that schools such as Peter House, such as Churchill, Prince Edward, 
normally when the, um, the economy was a bit more stable they would have toured uh, back in the day I know some country some uh, more fortunate schools would tour England uh, South Africa Botswana Namibia and such places and then by the time they come here they've got a fine-tuned team so we should be a bit easy on some of the teams such as uh, the Hillcrest because some of these boys are coming from home coming from their first term they're cricketers they're coming through after having barely finished their uh, holiday assignments and then coming together and trying to gel with the new side and usually around this time you've got a couple of upper sixes a couple of form threes and form fours that are coming to the side and they're gelling well and like we said that nutty squirrel that is our lunchtime treat and uh, our halftime treat Every time you don't find me on the mic, don't assume that I'm having one of those because you can imagine how fat I'll be if I have uh, 15 of those in a day. So it is a family affair, a good crowd, and uh, the match is still on. And this time it is uh, Hillcrest in that danger zone. And you know that uh, they are very unpredictable. The ball has been turned over. LKC not kicking for danger. And uh, one of those feeble kicks one more time. Guys, 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 why are the boys not kicking for good range and not kicking into touch it is very disappointing very very disappointing at this stage but uh, it is LKC ball hopefully this time the lineouts will be much cleaner and um, the ball starts moving some uh, local journalists and uh, local crowd enjoying a couple of uh, drinks while they watch the rugby perfect atmosphere the weather in Harare is always perfect there we go, the ball has been turned over as Hillcrest. One more time, that flair, that swag, big hit from the man, no contestion there. It is try time, Hillcrest. They are flawless, they look unstoppable at this moment. Indeed, indeed, they are looking unstoppable, the Hillcrest boys. The Leopards from Manikaland. And you know, uh, it's good to join you because uh, on your first day of commentary, you are all by yourself. Now, what you are experiencing is what the LKC is experiencing. You know what it's like to be mauled by a leopard. The thing right now, just to use a bit of schoolboy analogy in terms of Mbada or the leopard, is that uh, when you run, it runs faster than you. When you climb trees, it can carry three times its body weight up a tree. When you swim, it loves the water. And exactly it has done that. It's a clean kick, a nice conversion, two points. I would say by now uh, coaches to start investing more in uh, helping the boys to kick. We'll give you an update on that score just to make sure that the scorers have given us uh, that final feedback in terms of what the score will be like. But it is, it's been a very good festival. It's day number seven. The official tournament started on Monday and uh, a lot has been going on there is that kick so it's 31 5 and um, there's the crowd uh, more families coming through it seems like everyone is securing the seat for that five o'clock uh, for that four o'clock kickoff and there go the boys one more time Hillcrest and uh, the big man showing some swag turning around it looks more like a basketball game it looks like the playoffs because uh, he seems to be having all of these offloads but in as much as this is exciting, I would love very much to see these boys uh, perfecting on their basics. Because without uh, the basics, the game of rugby will be heavily flawed. Some of those uh, beautiful young faces that you will find at uh, the rugby match. It is for everyone. And the crowd is slowly building up. The big match today, the Tigers versus the Bulldogs. And it's scrummed down. LKC ball. And uh, the, the pass, uh, not very good, very nice and high. And then the LKC missing the services of that uh, prolific center. And I'm talking about uh, Checo. And Checo seems not to be in the mix. We'll find out later on if it's uh, due to injury. And uh, there goes those short passes, lateral passes. Doing very good there, picking up, and that's uh, the fourth phase in a row. It is beautiful how these boys just retain possession. Fifth phase, 
We have the sixth one going through clean, trying to turn that over, but they secure it. With six phases to go, or six phases gone rather, there's the seventh unbroken truck and trailer. And the boys get in more commitment this time. There's the eighth grabbing a leg, but re remaining on his feet. Eight phases unscathed. Going for the ninth. It looks like they'll go wide because they've got commitment, but they don't. And uh, that's the 10th phase. Getting into the third double digit in phases. And that's the 11th phase, but this time not gaining any ground and they're being pushed backwards. I'm still yet to find the intention in these phases as they've had uh, 12 phases, 14 phases, and they're being pushed backwards. The ball was sloppy, looks like a knock in favor of LKC. So there is some intent in depriving position. 15 phases going through. They seem to have passed that gain line. Not so sure if advantage is still being taken. So Riff blows back to say, let's go back to that advantage. But uh, Mr. T, can you imagine that these boys for the third time have gone for more than 10 phases in a row? And this is schoolboy rugby. These guys are under 20s. These guys are schoolboys and they are doing 12 phases. Uh, you've played in the National Rugby League. You're still playing. And... Uh, do you think it's possible, you know, for teams such as uh, Mbare Academy, Pumbare, Harare Sports Lab and the OGs to have 12 phases the same way that you see this in Super Rugby? No, it, it wouldn't be. Uh, as you can see, the young boys, as you said earlier on, they are a bit good on their first play, but they are lacking that flair you once said earlier on. And that is what we are looking for from them right now. As you can see, when they have that play, they are going forward and making it. Uh, and the referee draws it now back to them. My criticism of LKC is that uh, the last man, the eighth man uh, to come through, and I'm uh, talking about uh, Selani. Selani should have come through, picked the ball and gone blind to give enough time for these men to come through. There you go, Selani. He's got the pace, he's got the gas. I don't know why he keeps coming through to secure a secure ball already. The scrum off uh, calling out for extra numbers just to make sure that they secure that. But look at that. That pressure defense coming through from Hillcrest, making sure that every single centimeter and inch is taken care of. First time tackling, they're doing that very well. Now from the reverse angle, you can tell how much work is going into there. Uh, trying to turn that over with hands, but they're bringing in shoulders. LKC coming through, trying to flip that ball to present the sunny side up to his scrum off. And the boy's looking there. I don't know why they keep heading into that blind side. Do they have a kicker to go for points this time? They're well within range, but they take that hard option of phases. Let's count them once more because it's going to be one phase. And they go for it. They're within seven to eight yards within it. Second phase, gains a bit of ground, not much, goes almost to a similar position. Third phase, retain the ball, getting into that uh, position. Fourth phase, that's four, and still so much work being done, five phases, and it looks like Hillcrest will play the smart move and try to hold them up. Now that's the fifth phase, still not getting there, and they're being pushed backwards on the seventh, still retaining position. It's open play. Hillcrest ball to the wide side, to the center. Nice dummy. Could have made an offload back inside. And there's that offload, gaining some space, sidestepping. A wide pass to the far left to the big man who steps, knocks him down, gets up again. It's the third time he's done this. It's very difficult to bring down that pick and go but no support that's the difference between the two sides Hillcrest will pick and go and not support whereas uh, LKC will have so much support now look at that that overlap so much stepping going through but the stepping loses momentum the crowd is loving that more passing brilliant offload gaining the yards boys not going down lateral offload over the top one more offload does he have the gas in the pace and he's going for it he is going for it glory glory 
And it's try time for Hillcrest. What a good run from the Hillcrest boys, the Leopards. Bada. You know when Mr. T just goes, Mbada. You know, it simply means one thing. It means the leopard will get you on the ground, in the water. Glory, glory, try time. Quite a slam dunk, I think. If these were the NBA playoffs, this is the equivalent to a triple-double backhand slam dunk off an alley hoop. <laughs> and the uh, crowd absolutely loving that. But you see, we, we should not get away from the, the crucial elements of the game. The fact that uh, we have seen two things, that the boys know that support play is very important on both sides, but their approaches are totally different. Hillcrest is taking more momentum. It's a pick and go, as opposed to um, LKC, who are more of pick secure, go to the side. But you'll find that over five to three years uh, from now, LKC, if they play in the same manner, and this is the way they are wired, these guys are built for superior rugby and for professional rugby. That kick is nice, high and uh, wide, and uh, Hillcrest secured with the big man. Let's see, fourth time, he doesn't go down. This man is unstoppable, and he has gained at least five yards, and there they go wide again. That decision to spread, they see numbers, and he breaks a line, goes all the way. That is the flanker, Nyanidzi, and goes all the way. <laughs> this is the beauty of the Dairy Board Rugby Festival 2018 edition. Living up to its billing, these are kind of tries that make a nice highlights package. And I know very, very well that the producers are smiling and drooling because they have enough of these fantastic tries to put out a nice highlights package. But the, the biggest stands, the main stands at uh, Prince Edward High School are full. And you know that uh, once these stands are full, it means uh, it's going to be lit. This is the language that these young people use. They say when something is on fire, they say it is lit. So uh, I would safely say that uh, the Dairy Board Rugby Festival 2018 edition is uh, lit. And it's game time, try time, and uh, a lovely height. These young men, and they look very conditioned. If you look at their, their body structures and the way that they're executing their roles, you can see that uh, Hillcrest uh, is well conditioned. Seems good to be a substitution. Now the score is 43-5. Uh, it is missed conversion. And uh, that's the third missed conversion today. Had that gone through, I'm sure we'll be talking about a totally different story at the moment. We are at Prince Edward High School, and uh, so far the psyching up for the next match has already started. All of these boys have uh, gone through a lot of traditions, and I will tell you that behind the scenes, to make it for any first team, you have to go through some initiation process. And I'm not privy to all the cultures and what happens in these initiation processes, but I can tell you that uh, the Prince Edward Tigers have a new uh, initiation process that uh, is for the public to see. They have these weird haircuts that look like hats. And it's 43-5 uh, in favor of Hillcrest. One try coming through. That's beautiful scoreboard. There goes Hillcrest one more time. And uh, the ball has been turned over because of a knock-on. So it's LKC ball. And then uh, falling in, and the ref gives uh, a penalty. LKC taking a quick ball and stopped, stopped right in his tracks. So Hillcrest not making it very easy for these boys. And there they go for another phase. Surely, surely by now, the captain and the coach, you know that this game plan is not working. I'm sure they banked on securing and slowing down Hillcrest. With much intent, the tackles keep coming through. You'll notice from the top right of your screen that uh, Hillcrest is maintaining one sweeper just in case uh, 
LKC opens up to the fact that they can actually run past Hillcrest. But the tackling has been very hard. More tense moments. And uh, it seems like these phases are now starting to benefit Hillcrest more than they are LKC because they've lost two meters already and they've gone lateral, not gained a single yard, gaining just a few. But who knows if they will not gain them back, if they won't lose them back. All eyes on that ball. Ref calling to release. Coming in in a rather awkward body position. Holding on, and the ref does switch position and gives it to Hillcrest. Under absolutely no pressure, leading by 43 5. Hillcrest tap and go. They use their big man with big knock. Unstoppable. He goes again, he's got the gas. Not offloading, and there's that offload. A brilliant offload. He's on the run just near the try box. That's a brilliant run there from uh, Wesley Chitsinde. There's been a massive collision there. And then the ref calls for some, sa for some safety. The medic's just going to attain that. And I see the perfect combination. There we go, having it once more. And that is Bright uh, Nyaninde, the captain, offloading to Wesley Chitsinde, who's got the gas as the eighth man. Eight on eight, some good defense. And uh, it goes down. And it is try time. 48 5 in favor of Hillcrest. So it seems like we're getting into the 50s if this kick is clean. sets up for that kick ideally he would want to aim for the far left post he aims for it it's got the height but not given as 48 5 in favor of Hillcrest I'm sure the boys for bragging rights would like to have beaten uh, a Botswana base side by a massive margin We've seen quite a number of uh, these kind of margins, especially at the under 13 and under 14, uh, the under 16 uh, age groups, with the boys' uh, big mismatch. And from the body language, you can tell that the boys from Botswana have taken quite a bit of a beating. They are smaller in stature, but their technique is fantastic, especially in the forwards. Their forwards coach uh, seems to have his uh, eye on the money and he knows exactly what he's doing. The kick is out. It's nice and deep. Hillcrest allow that one to bounce. And uh, there they go. Gaining more mileage. That it's in the combination still. Banging in the yards. Hillcrest uh, penalized for holding on. And uh, LKC in a very good position to kick and gain mileage. They could easily get this one, but... Um, it looks like it's a little too late. Here's one of the, the players from LKC stretching it out. Ready to go through. The sun is out. And uh, you can see from the very far back of your screen, that is the Prince Edward Road. Quite a busy road uh, for commuters. Okay, see the ball is out. And they are trying to shift it. And uh, there has been a, a big hit. They go blindside. With one man extra. And as predictable, back inside with a bit of flair, the winger comes through, blistering pace. 
and uh, well done to them. Leruo Nakedi. Leruo Nakedi coming through with a blistering try. Finally getting a chance to release all of that express pace. 48-10 in favor of Hillcrest. That try one more time. Hitting the right angles and no one there to tackle him. No one saw him coming and he came through with a blistering try. Just to salvage a bit of pride for themselves, this kick will change, won't change much, but it will reduce that uh, massive margin. Some would say they'll go back home saying at least at no 2050. <laughs> because Hillcrest Tombada have done it. And it looks as though that kick wasn't through, so that is 48-10 uh, in favor of Hillcrest. Mbada looking very good. That is the end of the game that was, uh, between Hillcrest. The end of the match. And uh, well done to Hillcrest. Mbada beating LKC from Botswana.